Hello friends, welcome to engineering tutorials. Today we are going to start a new topic uh, which is related to sensors and transducers. It is especially important for a branch of instrumentation engineering and also of electrical and electrical and electronics engineering. So uh, we are going to uh, post a lot of videos related to this uh, about various sensors and transducers. So today's video is basically uh, just a slight insight into the basic concepts about uh, sensors and transducers, the basic uh, properties and just, uh, just a basic brush up. So we are going to start it. So the first uh, question is, what is a sensor? We, we, we hear a lot that uh, we have used this sensor, we have used that sensor here and there. So we, a question might be popping in our head that what is a sensor? So basically in simple words, a sensor is a device which converts a non-electrical quantity into electrical form. Now what is this non-electrical quantity? It is a physical quantity. Now this physical quantity, it can be anything. It can be temperature, it can be pressure, it can be force, it can be liquid flow, it can be moisture, it can be uh, motion, uh, velocity, displacement, anything. So these physical quantities are converted into electrical form. Now electrical form means voltage or current signals because whenever we interface a sensor with uh, uh, any sort of device such as a computer, a microprocessor, a microcontroller, we need electrical signals. It cannot interpret uh, physical signals, it cannot understand that. So we need to convert these physical quantities, physical parameters into electrical form so that they can be interfaced with a microcontroller or a microprocessor for further analysis. So, we understood that a sensor performs energy conversion. It converts physical quantities into electrical form. Now, as I said, the physical quantity can be temperature, pressure, force, motion and displacement, humidity, light, flow and, and, and there are various other physical quantities which can be converted into electrical form. Now, these physical quantities, it uh, has to be converted into voltage or current signals. But depending upon the type of sensor we use, the electrical output can be of various types. Sometimes we may get an output directly in terms of voltage or current signals. And uh, in some other cases, the sensor output can be in the form of a change in resistance, inductance or capacitance. Now this resistance, inductance and capacitance is converted into voltage or current signals with the help of suitable uh, signal conditioning circuits which we are going to discuss later. But for the time being you understand that sensor generally converts physical quantities into electrical form normally in the form of voltage or current signals within a standard range. Now we are going to uh, just uh, uh, know about some basic sensors which are used in day-to-day -day life in industries and uh, and other uh, areas for general measurement purposes. Now, the first temperature uh, sensor which we are going to just uh, know about is a resistance temperature detector. For example, it is a temperature sensor. It converts temperature change into resistance change. The RTD or the resistance temperature detector converts change in temperature, surrounding temperature, environmental temperature or any other temperature into a suitable change in resistance. Now this change in resistance is converted into voltage or current signal by uh, with the help of signal conditioning circuit. Next is thermocouple. It is also a temperature sensor. Now it converts change in temperature into voltage change directly. So here there is no need of a signal conditioning circuit because we are directly getting an output in terms of voltage. 
So, thermocouple converts change in temperature directly into change in voltage. Unlike RTD which uh, converted this temperature change into resistance change, now we had to connect it in a signal conditioning circuit to convert it into voltage. Then we have the piezoelectric sensor, it is a pressure sensor, it converts pressure or the applied pressure into voltage signal. Now there are, uh, we are going to discuss these sensors individually in the upcoming videos, but just to give you an idea about how sensor operates, I am just uh, uh, saying you these things. Next is a capacitive hygrometer, it is a humidity sensor, a moisture sensor. It senses moisture or change in humidity. So, it converts uh, this moisture change or humidity change into a change in capacitance. Again, it requires a signal conditioning circuit so that it can be converted into a change in voltage. Then we have the ultrasonic flow meter. So, as the name suggests, it uh, actually detects flow, fluid flow or velocity. So, it converts this fluid flow or velocity into change in frequency. So, basically it operates on Doppler shift phenomena, it is a, it's a <coughs> there is some principle behind it. So, which we are going to discuss uh, in the upcoming videos individually in detail, but just for the time being you understand that it converts fluid flow or velocity into frequency change. Then, what is a transducer and how is it different from a sensor? Now, most of the time we hear two words sensor and transducer and most uh, of us confuse it as same, as being the same thing and to a certain extent is also that, but there is a subtle difference between a sensor and a transducer. See, a sensor when used along with a signal conditioner becomes a transducer. So, sensor plus signal conditioner is becomes a transducer. So, as I said in uh, case of uh, RTD and uh, uh, this one uh, capacitive hygrometer, we require a signal conditioning circuit so that it can convert the capacitance change or the resistance change into voltage or current signal, we require a signal conditioner. So, so, for that purpose, uh, we have to connect a signal conditioning circuit. So, a sensor along with a signal conditioning circuit becomes a transducer. Now, what is the function of the signal conditioning circuit? So, basically it is amplification of a signal. Most of the time, the output of the sensor is very low. So, that uh, in order to connect it with the microcontroller or microprocessor, we have to perform amplification of the signal. So, the signal conditioning circuit does that. Also for the filtering of noise signals, frequency response matching and isolation or grounding purposes. So, these are some of the uh, uh, requirements for which we use a signal conditioning circuit. So, here it is, sensor plus signal conditioning becomes a transducer. So, a sensor is a part of a transducer, sensor along with in conjunction with a signal conditioning circuit becomes a transducer and the output signal, it is basically a voltage or current signal within the following range 0 to 10 volt DC or minus 10 to plus 10 volt DC, 0 to 20 milliampere or 0 to 25 milliampere. The output signal has to be within the following range for voltage and current. Next, classification of transducers. Now, the electrical transducers, they can be classified into two types, active transducer and passive transducer. Now, what is the difference between these two? Now, basically the main difference between these two is that the active transducers are self-generating. Their output is in the form of electric voltage or current, they are self-generating type and they do not require an external voltage source for their operation. Whereas, passive transducers, they are not self-generating type, they do not give an output in terms of voltage or current. So, they are required to be connected to a voltage source. So, basically 
<coughs> the ones which give the output in terms of voltage or current, they are thermocouple, piezoelectric sensors and piezoelectric sensors. These are active transducers because their output is directly in the form of a voltage or current. But other sensors such as resistance temperature detector, thermistor, potentiometer, capacitive hygrometer, their output is basically in the form of change in resistance, inductance or capacitance which has to be converted again into voltage or current with the help of signal conditioning circuit. So, they are passive transducers. So, this is the basic difference between active and passive transducer. Another way in which we can classify transducer is a primary transducer and a secondary transducer. Now, what is a primary transducer? The primary transducers convert the physical quantities such as uh, force, pressure, motion, displacement, all other things into suitable mechanical, mechanical phenomena such as motion or displacement. Okay? So, they convert the physical parameters into motion and displacement signals. For example, it is Borden tube, bellows and diaphragms are commonly used primary transducers. And the secondary transducers they convert the output of the primary transducer or the physical quantities into voltage, current, resistance, inductance, capacitance. So, basically the secondary transducers give electrical output, but the primary transducers give us mechanical output in terms of motion and displacement. But the secondary transducers, they give us electrical output such as voltage, current, change in resistance, change in inductance, change in capacitance, etc. Examples of secondary transducers are LVDT which is linear variable differential transformer, a piezoelectric sensor, thermocouple and resistance temperature detector. So, <coughs> here we have classified the transducers in terms of two properties, in terms of self-generating or not self-generating type or in terms of their output whether they give us mechanical output or electrical output. So, here we have discussed uh, some of the basic concepts which are related to sensors and transducers. Now, in the upcoming videos, uh, we are going to uh, discuss each of these transducers or sensors in detail. And there are a lot of sensors, lot of transducers nowadays available. So, we are going to post a lot of videos related to that. So, please uh, subscribe my channel engineering tutorial for more such videos related to uh, engineering and uh, other things and thank you have a great day